Good morning and praise the Lord, everyone. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. 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 God has been so good. He's a way maker. He's a provider. He's a keeper, a healer, and a deliverer. And for those things, we're so grateful. I can't thank him enough. There's a song that we used to sing coming up. If I had 10,000 tongues, I still couldn't praise him enough because he's just been that good. He's that good to us. Every day that we wake up, he's good. Amen? Amen. And all the things that he's done, you can just look back over your life and think yes. of the goodness of the Lord. He wakes us up. He allows us to travel on the streets and roads, highways, byways, airways, and uh, we return safely. Amen. I know there's a couple of you that work for our city and you travel the streets and roads picking up. He keeps you safe and sound. And um, I, I know it takes a special person to deal with the public, right? Amen. You have to just know that uh, you can't go off on people when you want to. You have to be polite. <laughs> you have to use your manners. You know, I worked uh, for the county for 14 years, and we had all kinds of people that came into our office, and it was, it was a challenge sometimes, but you still had to keep your composure. There was a gentleman that came in one day, and he was talking to my coworker. My coworker must have said something that he didn't agree with, and he told him right then and there, all to come across this counter and punch you in the nose. And we thought to ourselves, of course, we probably were about to call security, but thank God, you know, for his saving grace. Thank God for his keeping power. Thank God for delivering us. I had another coworker that had a gun pulled out on her. And I'm telling you, God is good. He's merciful and he's kind. Yes. Maybe that is not your story, but you have a story to tell. And we thank God for being here, yet alive, yes. in the land of the living. Hallelujah. <laughs> Clothed in, in our right minds. Hallelujah. He's a good God. So we welcome you to Sunday morning service. We invite you to worship with us, to praise God with us. Amen. To enjoy the Lord, to enjoy the word, the praise team. Every part of the service, we want you to be a part. Amen? Amen. For his goodness and his mercy toward us. So at this time, we're going to open up with prayer. And we're going to ask Minister Darnetta if she would come and open us with prayer. And then Pastor Boyd is going to come with the scripture following her. In that order, let's receive by saying amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you for another chance and opportunity that you have allowed us to come into your place one more time. We thank you for just being God and God alone. We thank you for life today. We thank you for everything that we have. We owe it all to you. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. We thank you for sending your son to die for us, Lord, so that we might be saved. We thank you for a place to worship. Thank you. We thank you for your word, your precious holy name, the name of Jesus. Yes. We thank you for your anointing and your presence and even your angels, Heavenly Father. Right now, we just ask that we welcome your spirit yes. and we yes. just ask that you take full control. Uh, bless the pastor as he brings forth the word and the praise team and everything that's said and done today. We thank you for all of your many wonderful blessings. We have jobs, we have homes, yes. we have heat, we have hot water, Hallelujah. things thank that you. so many times I take for granted. Yes. Lord, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. you are a worthy God. You are awesome. You reign. Lord, we just welcome you and everything that's said and done. And we just want to say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Good to be home. Amen. Amen. We want to turn to Proverbs, third chapter. 
and I'd like to read today verses 1 through 10. Proverbs 3rd chapter, verses 1 through 10. When you have it, say amen. All right. Read says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and long life and peace shall be added to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the tablet of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. May God bless the reading of his word this morning and the hearers. Thank the Lord for that word, that scripture. We have to trust him, amen. amen. We have to honor him, honor the Lord with thy substance and with thy first fruits of all thine increase. I thank God for being God amen. and God alone. He's a way maker. Yes, he is. yes, hallelujah. He is a miracle worker. Yes. He's the light in the darkness. And I thank him for that. I thank God. For we have to know who we are in God. Amen. We have to stand on the word of God daily. Because yes. the enemy will try to sway us and talk to us. But we have to know our identity. And it reminds me of the scripture over in Exodus. Uh, where Moses over Exodus 3 and 11. Uh, it says, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. Say, I will be with you. The Lord said that to Moses. And we have to remember that he is with us, whether we feel him or not, whether we feel his presence or not. He is with us. And know that. Stand, stand on that. Be assured in that. Be anchored in that, that he is with us. And this will be the sign to you that it is is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. He gave them a place to worship. As Minister Darnetta was praying, she was saying, thank you, Lord, for this place that we can come freely and worship our Savior. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your father sent me to you. And they ask, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. Say, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. I'm thankful, you know, when you think about identity, there's so many different things that come to my mind. We identify with our companies. We have some time to wear a shirt that represents, you know, who we work for and what we do. Sometimes the colors represent where you work and different things. And we have to act a certain way, right? right. You know, when you go to represent your job, they don't want you doing all kinds of stuff that you might do behind closed doors. They don't want you talking any kind of way that you might do you know, when you're just around friends and family, but there's a way that you represent yourself and you know who your identity is. You know where your help comes from. 
And you know, last week we went over, and I think some weeks before, we talked about the I am's. I am a child of the King. I am saved. I am redeemed. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. And those are things that we have to constantly do daily to remind ourselves of our identity and who we are and who we're representing. And that, that scripture blesses me all the time because, you know, if you read a little bit more, Moses is standing on holy ground. The Lord tells him to take his shoes off. You know, there's a burning bush. There's different things that are going on. It's a good reading. So please, you know, take the time to read that. Um, it'll bless you because it, it goes on to say that he is the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Amen. Amen. He's the God of the Hebrew boys. He'll deliver you out of a situation. They were in a fiery furnace, but they didn't even smell like smoke. They didn't even smell like they had been burned or consumed. Now, you know, in reality, if they were put into a fiery furnace, they would have died immediately. And the people that threw them in did die. Amen. But God's grace and his mercy. And he was there with them. I will be with you. He was with them. Hallelujah in the fiery furnace. So even when we're going through a fiery furnace, whatever that may look like for you, know that God is with you. He cares. He'll sustain you. He'll strengthen you. He'll give you everything and has given you everything that you need. He's equipped you with a sound mind. He's equipped you with the tools that are necessary to do the job. Minister Diana sent me a picture of her her equipment that she has to work with on her job, right? They sent her a whole bunch of stuff, and I was thinking, wow, that's all I could say. But, you know, God has given us all those tools and more that we need to work with daily. He gives us the blood of Jesus. Say the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. This I know. Oh, glory. I just thank him for the blood. There's other things that he gives us. He gives us the oil. He gives us the name of Jesus. He gives us the word of God. Our weapons are not carnal, but they're what? Woo, mighty. Mighty through God. And what can we do? We can pull down what? Strongholds. And that can be anything, right, in your life that you're dealing with. People are dealing with drugs. People are dealing with sickness. People are dealing with anger, lust, frustration. Hallelujah. But he'll pull them down. We have the power to pull those strongholds down in the name of Jesus. And he, he works. Just call on his name. Plead the blood of Jesus. Think about the blood. Hallelujah. And things will change daily. Things can change on your behalf. Amen. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? If you believe it, say, I believe it. Say, I trust him. I stand on the promises. Ooh, I know there's power in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. It reminds me even of the story, hallelujah, of Joseph and how God equipped him with everything that he needed. Joseph was done and treated pretty bad, right? His brothers did him bad. And a lot of times, you know, people have hurt because of their own family has done some things to them, you know, and it goes deep because you're thinking, my family? You know, why, why, why my brothers, you know? But Joseph, he withstood. He stood. He managed. Amen? And that story was flipped. He in turn then had to help his brothers. And he could have done them bad because they had sold him into slavery. They had put him in a pit. Can you imagine your brothers putting you in a pit, selling you into slavery? But God, 
Hallelujah. And he turned that situation around and he helped his brothers. Amen. He could have had a, what's the little saying we say from time to time, you burn me once, you burn me twice, all that kind of stuff. We have all kinds of stuff. Not me today. I think our pastor was just teaching the other day and he said, we have a saying, not me. Don't mess with me today. Right? He was talking about that. We have that in us sometimes where we want to act up a little bit, Minister Brenda. We do. And we'll say, don't mess with me. Not today. Today's not the day. I didn't wake up on the right side of the bed. Please don't bother me. But, but God, God will sustain you. He will help you get rid of that don't mess with me today attitude. Amen? Trust him. Just trust him. Ask the Lord to just, Lord, empty me out because I need you today. There's times I've had to tell Pastor John, please pray for me because I'm not, my spirit's not right right now. Right? You got to be transparent with yourself. Just, just tell the truth. Lord, I'm not, I, my mind's not in the right frame. And you have to go and pray and repent and get your mind right. And God is able to help you. Amen? He's able to cleanse your thoughts. Create in me a clean heart. And what? Renew a right spirit within me. Renew. And that's what we have to do daily to renew a right spirit. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Do you believe that he has to renew daily in us what we ought to be? Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. His power can make you what you ought to be. There's a song we used to sing. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. Amen. Ooh, his love can fill your heart and you will see. Thank you, Lord. Let him have his way with you. So that's what the word is saying in the songs. Let him have his way with you. Don't be rebellious and think that you can do it all by yourself. We need him. Amen. Amen. We need him. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's nobody like the Lord. Amen. He will purify you. He will cleanse you. Amen. And I thank God. You know, when I uh, was talking about Joseph just a little bit ago, I was thinking instead of revenge that he could have gave to his brothers, Joseph had mercy. Instead of revenge, Joseph turned the other cheek. Instead of revenge, Joseph showed leniency, clemency, and forgiveness. He heaped coals of fire up on their heads. And that's what we have to do sometimes. We have to, we just have to say, Lord, I don't understand it. I don't know why, but I'm going to be nice today. Say, I'm going to be nice today. <laughs> so <laughs> be nice, amen. I believe Minister Darnetta was teaching one uh, time and she brought out the little, do you all remember we used to wear those little braces and it had an acronym, WWJD, what would Jesus do? <laughs> and we have to remember, what would Jesus do in this situation? And it's not act ugly. Because he always loved people. He was kind to people, generous he performed miracles. Amen. And sometimes we know that we are not, you know, we can look at how we act and you think, Lord, I didn't deserve this, but I thank you for it. I praise you for it. You're a mighty good God. Amen. Amen. I want you just to be reminded of who you are in God. You are somebody. Amen. You are loved. In Revelations 1 and 6, it says, And hath made us kings and priests, your kings and priests, unto God and his Father. To him be glory, dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. Your kings and priests, hallelujah, walk in it, walk in victory, walk in truth, stand on his promises. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a good God. I want you to take a few minutes, give somebody a fist pump or an elbow rub or whatever it is that you do without touching and trying to get too close to somebody in this season. Amen. <laughs> tell them I'm glad to see you today. If you need to stand six feet, do it. But just tell them you love them. 
Amen. Just take a few minutes. We got a few minutes before the praise team comes. And we want you to enjoy the fellowship of one another. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for that time of fellowship. And so, again, right before... Right before the praise team comes, we have a few minutes that we want to see if anybody has a short praise for the Lord. Amen? Minister Darnetta. All right. As soon as I got out on my bus ride, I don't know what day it was, 
Uh huh. But I've never had an issue like this. I was at that intersection on Tillotson and Bethel. Uh huh. I just started, picked up students at Scheidler. So I'm coming into campus, and of course, I'm in that turning lane to turn left, it would be. So you're waiting on cars. Well, it was, it was just one car, and the light had went from yellow to red, and I'm hanging out in the intersection. Mm -hmm. And you think mm -hmm. that people would have sense enough to stop. Well, today, somebody decides that they need to run through a red light, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to turn, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I had to, to stop and let this person go, but... I thank God. Thank God. In the morning, I've learned how to get up and pray. Hallelujah. To say. I yes. Pray some little pretty prayer, but I said, Lord, send your angels to protect me. Yes, God. And go before me and make the crooked place straight. Thank you, Lord. And a lot of times, we sometimes when we communicate with God, we don't know why we say what we say. True. But the Holy Spirit knows. Yes. Thank God for just for preserving and protecting my life yes. and the students on the bus. Thank you, Lord. And then I said, Lord, or whoever that was, because I didn't even see who it was, I said, bless that person. That's right. And I thank you for keeping all of us safe. Amen. So I thank God for that. I thank him for even the storm. Yes. You know, Lord, we thank you for all of this snow. And thank you for the heat. And yes. Water, yes, and God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes. Amen. So, you know, I thank God. He is just an awesome Savior. Beautiful. Yes. He's our creator. Yes. You know, I love God. So Amen. Amen. You know, uh, I was thinking when Minister Darnetta was testifying about that and the Lord keeping her and preserving her life and you know, morning after morning, I get up and I pray for my entire family. And I know those that are, you know, driving and traveling for a living. I just thank God for keeping them safe and sound. And, you know, as the snow was about to come and I was thinking to myself, I'll be honest, Lord, please let it snow. I don't want to go to work. I just need a break, God. I need to catch up on my homework. I was just thinking all these things, right? And so... John said to me, Pastor John said, you know, while we're praying for snow, the homeless are praying for it not to snow. And I said, well, Lord Jesus, please just keep them safe. Give them a, a warm place to stay, but I still want it to snow. And thank God for heat. You know, we are, we, we take so, we can take things for granted, but I thank God for, we all have homes that we live in that are warm and comfortable. I believe all of us. I've been to your homes, uh, most of you anyway, and I know that the Lord has blessed us. And we just have to be grateful and thankful. But he is a keeper. He, he protects us daily from danger seen and unseen. You know, we, we came up testifying about that. It seemed like the saints would say almost the same thing every Sunday. And I was telling Pastor John Aunt Lilla about Grandmommy and how she would, you know, we just lived like, or she lived like two blocks from the church that we went to, and we would pick her up, and she would immediately, we thought we was going to church and just down the street, right? And she would, Lord, in the name of Jesus, she would just begin to pray for traveling mercies. And I thank God for that because that, along with my father and mother, instilled in us to pray before we do anything, even driving, simple things. And I thank God that when we would go just two blocks down the street, people was cutting us off, running stop signs, and we would get a little irritated. And Joy, I don't know about you, but, you know, we try to, you know, we may get a little rough, rustled up a little bit in our spirit again, creating me a clean heart, right? Get your mind right, waking up on the so my grandmother would say often, they may be on drugs. You know, slow down. She she would be on us about all the time. And I told Pastor John, I said, my grandmother thought everybody was on drugs. But I thank God, you know, just for his mercy and his grace, for covering us daily. So at this time, it's time for praise team. We're going to sing unto the Lord a new song. Praise him because he's good and his mercy endureth forever.
praise team, come on. Brother Mark, please. Go ahead, Brother Mark. I just want to say I thank God for being here this morning. Yes. 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 Still getting right to my right mind. Yes, Lord. I want to thank you for healing Daddy. Yes, yes. yes. amen. Yes. His hand to heal my father. Because like I said, it kind of hurt me. I was sad. I've never seen my father like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, timing and God's timing, it's not ours. We don't understand. We're not the question. Yes. Just roll. Amen. Roll, roll with it. But I thank God for that and the situation as far as the movement I was going through. I think everyone knows, but I know my sisters and uh, the, the pastor know. Yes. As far as the transition, I, I was wondering at first from Walnut Manor to, to uh, Daly. Uh -huh. Daly was a location I wanted to be in. So I, long story short, I won't be able to be long. I uh, thank God for working that situation out. Amen. 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 And, and the young lady had a Bible class with at Dallas. Put your trust in God in that Bible class. Mm -hmm. Bible class was about two, two three weeks back. On yes. Wednesday. And, and I needed that. Amen. And I needed that. So I, I didn't good. want to sit up, take too much of your time. I thank the Lord for making a way. Amen. And that's what he does. Amen. And I thank yes. the Lord for my, my, my brother-in-law. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 My brother-in-law. Thank you. Thank God. Amen. Him and my father. Mm. Amen. 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 I know that's right. And give God a hand, praise God. Amen. Thank you, God, for His goodness this morning. We're always excited about singing and uh, just lifting up the name of the Lord. Uh, our worship is just predicate to. To getting ready to hear from God, Amen. Yes. Yes. Sort of tune our hearts and our minds to what uh, God wants. Uh, music in general is a good way to set the mood. Yes. Ain't that right, Pastor Boy? Amen. 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 Boy, he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, we're we're going to set the mood this morning uh, for what God wants to do. No, that's oh, right. Yes. God is the one who made music. Yes. So he, he loves music. Yes. He loves a good song. You hear what I'm saying? We're crazy up here. We are preparing for something. Uh, you know, uh, Pastor Boyd, I'm going to pick on him this morning. When we, got, when we first got married, he showed me a picture of a robe he had on. And he said he was, he, he was strolling around in his robe. I said, no, brother, I could take something from him. I can't learn something from everybody. I, I ain't got a house, so I wouldn't got me a robe. <laughs> Give me a role. All right now. But but it's Ooh. important to be able to prepare for what God is doing. And, and that's really what we've been teaching and sharing the last few weeks. Amen. When we talk about patience, I think we talked about patience of waiting on God. Yeah. And we also talked right. about there was a way to wait on God. Right. Uh, sometimes you can wait complaining or murmuring or, or really not being focused. And, mm. uh, you can really shipwreck yourself spiritually if you're not focused mm -hmm. while you're waiting. Yeah. on the blessing or just waiting on God in general. Mm -hmm. Luke says in, in, in your patience mm -hmm. rest your souls. So it's very important uh, that we uh, just learn how to uh, prepare for God's coming. Yes. Even in the event of uh, just temporal blessings. That's right. uh, you know, relationships, uh, you know, uh, property and things that God blesses us with. Because God does all those things for us, doesn't he? The psalmist said that the the, uh, the gold is his and the silver is his. Mm -hmm. Cattle on a thousand hills belongs to God. Yeah. Right. How many of y'all had a cheeseburger this week? <laughs> yes. uh, had some prime rib. Yeah. Yeah. How about some pork? We got some pork here. Yeah. Don't lie. He's like Roscoe Dickens. Don't lie here. But all that belongs to God. Oh, the Bible said all that is his. Oh, yes. You bought it from McDonald's, but it came from God. No, that's yeah. right. Amen. Good to see you, Brother Scott. Amen. So as always, we, we just ask that you are comfortable here. So we want you to feel free to worship God yes. uh, as you as you feel to worship him. And, and don't uh, close yourself up just to, to fill in the mood of him. Mm -hmm. Just like we would do any other motivating source in our lives. You know, music gets us going if you're cleaning. Uh, the, the songs that we sing are designed to just work in you. First, that remembers of how good God is. Yes. Yes. Thank uh, sometimes you. that's all it takes is a yes. reminder to Ooh. turn my attitude around and right. lift my spirit. Thank I just you. need a reminder of the goodness of God. Yes. 
Yes, and thank sometimes you. Sometimes I just remind myself of my mother who passed in 2003 or four, yes. and I just I immediately get happy. Yes. She's just such a wonderful right. person. Mm -hmm. Take my mind off all the crazy no, people right. I got to deal with, and I'll just remember her for a little while. Mm -hmm. But you can, there was someone greater than my mother. Exponentially greater. His yes. name is Jesus. Yes, yes. Jesus. thank you, Lord. So today is that day, yes. as thank every day, Jesus. that we particularly just set aside all our weights and our heaviness yes. and, and remember as a corporate yes. body the goodness of God. Yes, yes. thank you. Uh, that He is faithful in thank all you. things. Yes. Nobody yes. like Him. Nobody. Yes, oh, thank you. Yeah. When they call Him faithful, thank you, got a capital Jesus. F on it. Yes. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is good. Yes. Thank you, God yes. is love. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So we give him thanks. So let's, let's get ready. Let's give God one more hand praise. Thank you, Lord. Don't be shy about clapping your hands if you want to stand and give God the Holy Ghost two steps.
All glory to all glory to you are the Lord. You are the Lord. The Lord of all. The Lord of all. We worship you. We worship you. All glory to all glory to you are the Lord. You are the Lord. The Lord of all. The Lord of all. We worship you. We worship you. All glory to all glory to you are the Lord. You are the Lord. The Lord of all. The Lord of all. We worship you. We worship you. All glory to all glory to you are the Lord. You are the Lord. The Lord of all. The Lord of all. We worship you. We worship you. All glory to all glory to you are the Lord. You are the Lord. The Lord of all. The Lord of all. We worship you. We worship you. All glory to all glory to you are the Lord. You are the Lord. The Lord of all. The Lord of all. The Lord of all. Thank you, Lord. This is 
How great is our God. 
can rose from the dead. Rose from the so dead, I dead rise so I can rise again. Talk to the lots of room. You must prove it just to come and call me. Just to call me. He's our hope of glory. One day we'll be to see his face. One day I will get to see his and face. I am great. I am great. You love me enough. You love me Let enough. Me enough. Let that sink in. I want you to close your eyes and just reflect on a time that I'm saying you really needed God. Yes. You know, we, we all have those times. It doesn't matter if it was 10 years ago, if it was last year, this year, or yesterday. God has brought all of us out to bring us in. And I stand here before you all as a miracle. I had, I had cancer. I had thyroid cancer. And a knot was growing on my neck and it was getting bigger and bigger and cutting my breath off and I said well I guess I finally I'm gonna have to go to the doctor and I seen about it and um, I had surgery the Lord healed me I don't know how many years it has been that might have been 99 I had the surgery but I'm cancer free I'm telling you God is a good God all you have to do is just call on him call on him and he'll answer God is good. I'm here to introduce the speaker, present to you, some to you. Um, I thank God for Pastor John. He's a man of God. I thank the Lord for sending him in all of our lives, for sending him to this church, for sending him in our family. He knows the word of God. He's there for us. Um, 
we are his children. <laughs> We're supposed to be obedient and, and act right and don't give Brother John, Pastor John problems. Just do what you're supposed to do. Come to church. Be responsible. Ask First Lady and Pastor if there's anything that you all can do to make their uh, journey, their uh, load easier, lighter. Just, you know, just, just be those children that we all need to be. I thank God for, you know, he's, he's like a brother to me. I can talk to John about anything. He prays with me. He's spiritual. Um, there's just so much I could say about him. I'd be here all day long. I know Lynetta's blessed with a good husband that she's always prayed and asked God for. And I just thank God for what he's doing. He, he's brought John into our lives, and he's a good pastor. I just want to give thanks. My, my father pastored for a very long time, and I'm almost a senior, and I'm still a pastor's kid. And, I'm, you know, I'm grateful for that. It, when I was younger, it used to, I used to get so upset because I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to go to those 4 o'clock meetings. You know, but now I stand here today, and I'm grateful for that. I'm thankful for that opportunity. You know, when you're, when you're kids, you have to do what mom and dad say. You have to go to church. You have to do this. You have to make your bed. You have to come inside before the street lights go off. Well, those kids down the street's playing, Mom. You know, but we had to do what we had to do, and it's not always easy being obedient. It's the right thing to do, but sometimes it's not always the thing that we want to do. But I just, I thank God for all his many, many wonderful blessings, you know, to the children of men. And I thank God that my dad pastor in all those years, you know, it's just such a blessing because he brought us in, you know, to bring us out of, you know, and I don't know if you all got that, but God is good. And sometimes when we don't even know what is best for us, God knows. He, he knows us better than we know ourselves. And he's been better to me than I've been to myself. So I just want to say thank you, Lord, for saving my life. He's a lifesaver. He's a life giver. He's a keeper if you want to be kept. And if you meet God, he will meet you. If you go with God, he will go with you. You have to make the first step, and he will meet you. He's not going to do it all. He's a gentleman, and he, he gives us a free will and a free mind to serve him. I thank the Lord for you all. You all are such a blessing to me. And this is God's man, and he is a man after God's own heart. I want to present to you, and uh, what's the word? Introduce, thank you. I'm up here too long. I want to present and introduce. This is God's man, pastor. I call him Bishop John Lee. Let's stand on our feet and give God praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give God some praise this morning. Amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Thank God for each and every one of you. Thank you, Sister Darnetta, for such kind words. She left out some of the bad stuff, but that's fine. That's how you're supposed to introduce somebody. You're supposed to bring up all the bad stuff. Amen. We're going to get right into the word this morning. The things that have been said and ministered this morning by the women uh, are right in line with what God has put on my heart for the church this morning. Uh, when we talk about thinking about the goodness of God, part, part of our lack of service to God and our lack even of worship in church to get up and praise, and sometimes I don't know what we're thinking about. But sometimes we think about anything except God right here in his house, but a lot of that is because we, we forget what he's done. Uh, many of us have children who are just not appreciative. How quickly they turn on us. After all that we've done for him a lot of times, and if he hadn't happened, and the day's coming, it's going to, you're going to shake your head and say, what happened? And, and we could just pray for him, but they become unappreciative. And you think, and to us, a family or a father or a mother, we, we, we recall times where they didn't even know what we were doing for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't even have a clue of the prayers we made or the money we spent because we don't feel a need to tell them all the time. That's right. Amen. We just do it. Because we love them. And even when they're bad, we do it. We don't stop paying the light bill because the kid is bad. Right. Amen. We don't stop buying food and feeding them. Uh, in the same way with God, he don't need to tell us everything he's done for us. The Bible says we sin without knowing, yet his, his love covers a multitude of sin. 
So when we come into the house, we ought to be ready to praise God because he's done a whole bunch. Yeah. We ought to be ready to get off Facebook or Instagram and give God just a little bit of time yeah. for his word and for worship. Is that all right? Yes. I, I believe that wholeheartedly this morning. I, I don't think God wants a divided heart. No. And he finds a lot of times a divided heart in his worship. Matthew's gospel. Thank you. Matthew 1. I believe there's something that's going to be a blessing today. You know, sometimes I get excited. Sometimes I don't know what God is doing when I'm studying. I said, Lord, I can't. I'm all over the place here. But, but sometimes I get excited. I'm excited this morning uh, about what God has done. Not is going to do. You didn't catch what I said. I said I'm excited about what God has already done. Some of, you, some of us are waiting for God to do something. The Bible says the, the, the Jews look for a sign. They're always looking for the next sign. Right. Greeks look for wisdom. I, I need more revelation. But the Bible says we as the New Testament born again believers preach Christ crucified. Now, can you get excited about that? Do you need more revelation this morning? Do you need another sign? Do God need to do something for you to give him praise this morning? You got to have a mind to give God praise because he hung Jesus out on the cross. Oh, that's greater than a rainbow, ain't it? I'm always waiting for the rainbow, running it down, trying to get a pot of gold. <laughs> but, but let me tell you what. There's nothing greater, nothing greater than to look at the sacrifice that God made for our sin. Hallelujah. And that ought to provoke us into praise. Yes. Yes. Let's stand this morning. We're going to read Matthew 1. We'll read verse, verses 1 through 8, 1 through 17. It's a good number. In the first clause of 18, pray for me this morning. we got to... Give us something uh, that will be a blessing to us. If you can read along if you want to, I'm reading from the King James Version. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob. Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. Judas begat Phares and Zara and Thamar. And Phares begat Esram, and Esram begat Aram. Mm -hmm. Aram begat Amenadab, and Amenadab begat Nasan, and Nasan begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz of Rakab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, mm -hmm. and Obed begat Jesse. Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. And Solomon begat Reboam, and Reboam begat Abiah. And Abiah begat Asa, and Asa begat jo Josaphat. And Josaphat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozias, and Ozias begat Joatham, and Joatham begat Achaz, and Achaz begat Ezekias, and Ezekias begot Manasseh, and Manasseh begat Amon, and Amon begat Josias, and Josias begat Jeconias. Ooh, I got through it. Yeah. And his brethren begat the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias, Jeconias and Salathiel, and Salathiel begat Zerubbabel. And Zerubbabel begat Abiad, Abiad, and Abiad begat Elikayim, and Elikayim begat Azor, and Azor begat Sadok, and Sadok begat Achim, and Achim begat Eliad, and Eliad begat Eliezer, and Eliezer begat Mathan, and Mathan begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, all of the generations from Abram to David are 14 generations. Somebody say 14. 14. And from David until the carrying away unto Babylon are 14 generations. Somebody say 14. 14. And from the carrying away until the Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Somebody say 14. 14. In the first portion of verse 18 reads thusly. Let's all read together. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. You may be seated. 
I want to minister for a few minutes this morning under the idea of the deliverer. Ooh, glory, the, deliverer. the deliverer. Yes. The deliverer. The deliverer. Mm. The deliverer. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you this morning for your goodness. Thank you for your word. We thank you for an opportunity to be here together. Uh, we can't do anything without you, so we ask for your spirit that is already here that uh, you might set our hearts fully on the grace that is to be brought to us this morning. Uh, ease our mind this morning and give us peace in our spirit separate situations, peace in a storm, that peace that you gave Peter on the water, uh, that peace that you breathed into the lives and, and the hope that you gave the disciples and the apostles, even the New Testament church today. We thank you now for your word. It is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Hallelujah. So we thank you for that life-giving word, that transforming word that you have, that that same word might come alive this morning and touch us in the parts that are weak and unable. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. The deliverer this morning, I want to share just a little bit. Uh, what is the significance of the number 14? I, I had you say it several times because when we read the Bible and things jump out at us, we ought to jump back at it. Uh, in your own personal study, if you're reading and you don't go over a number or just a clear inference of something. In just a short few texts, the Bible uh, gives us the number 14. So why? Why not any number? Well, God is not ambiguous. He does things for a purpose. He does things for a reason. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. Each gospel is different. When, when we read the gospel, it's important to understand uh, who is the audience, who are they speaking to. Luke, Luke was a Gentile. He was like you and I. He wrote to Gentiles. Amen. I believe he was a Greek, but he wrote to those who were not Jewish. But John wrote his gospel specifically for one reason. He said, these things are written that you might believe and that believing in God, you might, Christ, you might have life in his name. Yes. Can I get amen? amen? He only used seven miracles in the whole book of John, yet it is our favorite. Because it is basic and plain, a child could read the Gospel of John. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful book. And, and just by sheer numbers, most people prefer the Gospel of John. Amen. The book of Mark, it, it sets forth Christ as a servant. And in the first chapter, there's more miracles in the first chapter of Mark than there is the entire book of John. Amen. Amen. That's a servant. Uh, Many, many miracles, miracle after miracle, the, the, the physical work of Jesus, the spiritual work of Jesus, the faithfulness of God to serve, we find it in the book of Mark. Do you understand that God is working in your life this morning? Uh, when we're praying to God, when we're worshiping him, when we're obedient, when we're seeking him in worship, God is faithful to you. He's serving you. Uh, let me rock your mind. Let me rock the boat this morning. When you're disobedient. When you're not worshiping God, or when you're not thinking about him, God is serving and looking after you. Amen. Amen. You should have said that a little louder. Amen. I said when you're Amen. not obedient to God, yes. when you're not thinking about him, when you're headed the wrong direction, God is working on your behalf. Amen. Amen. So when we come to the book of Matthew, Matthew's book is specifically written to the Jews. It, it is what may not be politically correct, but, but it's downright Jewy. <laughs> it's downright Jewy, so there's things in his gospel that if you don't understand a little bit about the Hebrew text and the language and the thoughts and the ideas of that day, you'll never get the true meaning. Amen. Amen. It's what we call study of Scripture. Mm -hmm. It's study of Scripture. So it's going to take some time to get in the Word of God to understand what God really is trying to do so that we might be blessed. Amen. Amen. So it is through the word of God that brings light into our heart, which is understanding where we get our direction from. It, it is in Christ that we find our feet. It's in Christ that we find our solid ground. Amen this morning. What is the significance of 14 generations? Well, does it fulfill a prophecy? I'll just ask some questions, and then I guess I'll just try to prove a point a little bit. 
But, but the Hebrews have what we call gematria, which was a system of assigning numerical values to phrases and words. So that you could add up the sentence. And, and they didn't do this ambiguously or for no good reason. They, they did it so they could tie certain scriptures and words together. Uh, so that the phrases uh, with identical numerical values had similar relations to one another. Amen. Amen. Uh, how many fish was it that, that, that they caught? 120 fish that Christ caught. But they knew that, that when Jesus said, now are you the sons of God, they understood uh, that that had the numerical value of 120. So they could tie his text together uh, so that they understood what he was doing. You see, I, I, you one time you was a fisherman, but now you're fishers of men. Now are you the sons of God? Because it's not going to work unless I empower you with the power of the Holy Spirit. All right. You see, I, I can go out and I can catch fish for you, but I don't want you to be a fisher man. I want you to be a fisher of a man. Now yes. are you the sons of God? See, right. Because son in the Bible typically does not mean gender. I've told you this before. It means a position of power, sonship, power, because God uses those sort of symbolic things to, to get a message across. Yeah. In the Bible, a son is a strong force. Yeah. Even today, if we have a son, then he's doing what he's supposed to. <laughs> There's trouble if you mess with me because of my son, who even as a father sometimes can be older, can be weaker, a little slower, but not the son. Mm -hmm. uh, and a father that has many sons right. is a powerful father. Thank you. So we have this number 14 that is in our text today that we want to take a look at. We understand that this gematria is a system of assigning numerical values to words and phrases so that we may be able to tie some relation to each other. So he ties 14 down through the generations from Abraham to David to, for you to understand and I to understand that there are similar things happening through all these generations. Well, in the Hebrew, 14 means deliverance and release. Someone say deliverance. deliverance. That's our topic today. Someone say release. release. Someone say deliverance. deliverance. Someone say release. release. Because this morning, this particular group of people all need two things. Say deliverance, deliverance. and release. release. Say deliverance, deliverance. and release. And release. Uh, everyone here needs these two things. It doesn't matter who you are or what you're going through or what your mindset is, whether or not you're willing to admit it or not. Yes. Everybody in this place this morning needs this word. Someone yes. say deliverance, deliverance. And, release. and release. It may be something different from all of us, but in order for us to have deliverance, there has to be a deliverer. Yes. Yes. Can I get amen this yes. morning? Amen. Amen. The two words together in the Hebrew, uh, not that it matters altogether, me is yod the left. It, it signifies the outworking of a hand of the door. It, it symbolizes a door. A lot of times when we leave, when we're freed, uh, when we're released from someone, we, we pass through a door. And as the Hebrews would read through this and see the number 14, they would understand that this deliverance would come through some way. Israel was delivered from Egypt by the Passover lamb that was killed on the 14th day of the month. Amen. Yes. When we look in the book of Acts 27, 33 through 34, the ship that was carrying Paul to Rome, the Bible lets us know it was caught in a storm. But they were delivered on the 14th day. Can I get amen this morning? I, I don't want you to think God uh, uses numbers uh, in, to confuse you or to throw you off or for you to even try to use a lucky number to do something. Uh, the lucky number for the Jews, I believe, was 18. So maybe if they had lottery that day, a lot of those Jews uh, with their religious self would be at the ticket house. No, no. Gematria is designed so, so you can see the connection of common things in Scripture. So when we see 14, look for deliverance and look for a deliverer. In Genesis 12, 10, Abraham went down to Egypt in order to deliver himself from the famine in Canaan. It was the 14th time Abram's name is mentioned in Scripture. 
The 14th time that Abraham is mentioned in Genesis 18 and 13 when the Lord told him was when the Lord told him that Sarah would deliver a child, Isaac, the next year. The Bible says when the Lord told Sarah that she would deliver a child, she said, Sarah laughed. Are you laughing this morning? We can get to a point where we don't believe God can deliver us from things and people. And not just get to the point where we doubt God, but to the point where we flat out laugh. But the Lord told Sarah this, is anything too hard for God? And I want to posit that question to you this morning. Is there anything too hard for God? And my personal answer is no. And your answer as a believer ought to be no. The fourth time, 14th time in Israel's name is mentioned in Genesis 45 and 28 was when Jacob, Israel, came to understand that God had delivered Joseph. Yes. This was also released Jacob from his second 21-year time of trouble, for Joseph had presumed to be dead for 21 years. The 14th time when we look in the book of Numbers 27 through 22, talk about Joshua now. It was the occasion where Moses had laid hands upon him to commission him as Moses' replacement. Remember that 14 is a sign of deliverance and release. When Moses put his hand upon Joshua, it released Moses from his calling and it delivered Joshua into his calling. The 14th time that Jesus' name is mentioned in the book of Luke is Luke 4 and 35. The Bible lets us know that Jesus delivered a man from demons. Matthew's gospel is clearly written for Jewish Christians living within the proximity of the homeland. And again, as I pointed out, it is the most Jewish of all the gospels. Uh, he is writing to what we would call the Hebrews today. What is the difference between Hebrew and Israel, which really there's no difference, but there is a difference. You see, we live in a country where we have lost, all of us have lost our heritage. We want to be called African Americans, but we don't know anything about Africa. <laughs> Can I get amen this morning? Amen. And not just us, when we talk about Irish folks or Italians, they're right in the same bucket with us. We have re replaced nationality with color. Uh -huh. Church, but God didn't make colors. God made nations. If we go to Europe today, they got black Europeans, and they're talking downright British. That is their national identity. So when Christ came, there were those who still had the indigenous culture of the Hebrews, and they understood, and they could understand this letter very well. But we live in what we call a melting pot. Somebody say melting pot. It's like we used to call it potluck. And in potluck, you start putting carrots and potatoes and celery and beef and all this stuff. And believe it or not, everything in that pot can taste the same. Mm -hmm. And in America, if we're not careful, we can all look the same, even as believers. Oh, that's no good. Even as Christians and saying we're saved and we trust in God, we can have the exact same behaviors as folks who are not saved, who do not trust in God. Oh, I'm preaching this morning. It is important. Do not lose your Christian heritage this morning. Do not lose the very thing that drew you to faith. It's easy to get caught up in the, in the wonderful things of the world and, and the things I enjoy. And, and now that God has set me free, I really don't have time for his service. But make sure that you keep your identity, church. Make sure you keep that Christian culture. Even if you have to go back to the day that you first believed. Hallelujah. Read God's word and establish yourself, uh, not as a Hebrew, but, but as a true uh, Israel, a person whose heart is set on God. Thank you, Lord. Don't leave. Don't lose your intrinsic value. Thank you, Lord. Paul said if, if we lose it, we'll, we'll fail to shine like stars and a crooked and perverse generation. When we look into the text this morning, I'm going to try to rush through. We find three great deliverers in the Bible. Somebody say deliverer. Deliver. 
the first one I want to just spend about 60 seconds talking about is a man named Abraham. The Bible lets us know that Abraham was the father of our faith. Amen. When God got ready to move, he chose. Uh, when he gets ready to move, he chooses. Uh, when he gets ready to do something, he chooses. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here because God chooses in his grace who he wants to choose. The Bible lets us know in the, in the book of, of uh, Genesis that this Abraham took 318 armed servants and he rescued Lot. Lot had voluntarily went his own way. The Bible said he pitched his tent towards Sodom. Uh, he voluntarily chose a path that was contrary to God. And before you judge Lot, the Bible says that all we like sheep have gone astray. Uh, we have chosen our own way. But yet God in his loving kindness has reached out to us and delivered us in times where we couldn't deliver ourselves. Can I get an amen? Uh, that's a big long word that all. That's everybody, every color, every nation, every creed. All of mankind, God has reached out. God has reached out. The Bible lets us know that Abraham took 318 armed servants. Somebody say 318. 318. The number of grace is mentioned 318 times in the Bible. And it was the number of armed servants that delivered Lot. The, number, the name grace is mentioned 318 times in the Bible. And it is the number of armed servants that Abraham took to deliver Lot. The number 318 is the number of armed servants that Abraham took to deliver Lot. And the name Grace is mentioned 318 times in the Bible. You're going to get it in a minute. It took 318 servants, uh, far fewer number, it seemed, to deliver Lot. Uh, from the evil kings. And grace is mentioned 318 times in the Bible. Do you know it was grace that delivered you this morning? Do you know that it was the unmerited favor of God that brought you where you are? Uh, the psalmist said he brought me out of a mire clay. I wonder if he brought you out of the pit this morning. You don't have to tell your story this morning, and I won't ask, but I already know. He brought you out just like he brought me out. The psalmist said that he set my feet up on a rock, hallelujah, and that he established my goings, and he gave me a song to sing. Do you remember what God did this morning? 318, the, the number of armed servants, but yet we see it is the number of grace. It took God's grace to save us. Peter says, for as much as you know that it was not corruptible things that brought you out. Hallelujah. Such as silver and gold. How much stock do you put in your money this morning? Mm. Your money did not save you. Mm -mm. The things you have can't save you. Thank you. He says, you receive these from old conversations, vain conversations, empty conversations that you receive from the tradition of your fathers. He said, but we were all saved by the precious Blood of Christ as a, a lamb without spot who was ordained before the foundation of the world. So we find out in Abraham we see the gospel at work. We see the blood of Jesus at work. We see the grace and the goodness and the mercy of God at work even in Abraham. What a great deliverer Abraham was. Lot had chosen a field in an area that was well watered. He had chosen a place with his eyes. He chose a place by looking at what it was. Instead of seeking God, he trusted his own eyes. Church, the Bible says we do not walk by sight, but we walk by faith. And sometimes you have to be willing to go to a place that doesn't look good to do the will of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for this example that we have in Abraham. He's in what we call the Hall of Faith. But as we move on past Abraham, we move to a guy named David. The Bible says the second set of 14, there would come another deliverer. You recall the scene, don't you? 
uh, Israel had not yet became a nation. Uh, they wanted to be have a king like all the other nations, as if one person was going to make all the difference. They had all the providences of God. They had a, a pillar of fire by night and, and a cloud by day. They had the blood of the lamb. They, they became a nation on the blood of Jesus Christ, the symbolic blood. <laughs> but yet they wanted a king. They wanted a tall and a handsome king like Saul. So God gave them Saul, and Saul was skillful. Saul was smart, but Saul didn't see God. And it don't care how intelligent or how smart a leader is, how much of a business mind he is, there will be mayhem in a nation if the leader does not see God. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So God removed Saul because of his disobedience. Someone who is well capable but would not see God in his decisions. So God said, I have found a man yeah. after my own heart. Yeah. And when they got ready to go seek David, it wasn't who the, that Jesse thought he was going to be. He had brothers and family members who, who were stronger, who were smarter. I guess I, I assume they were wiser. Surely they beat up on little brother. But David had a secret weapon. He had the name of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Bible lets us know that he, he, he slew a bear and slew a lion. Yeah. And he slew Goliath not because of who he was, but because of the God that he served. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. David Hallelujah. David took Israel from a broken nation that was scared. You remember how they stood out in front of Goliath? David came out and said, who is this man to disgrace Israel? Just a little sandwich carrying boy. Carrying a little bologna sandwich. Maybe he had peanut butter and jelly. But he had power and favor. He wasn't scared because he had God on his side. Thank you, God. You don't hear what I'm saying. He had God on his side. David united Israel. A great leader always unites. He united Israel, and he conquered and conquered from Dan to Beersheba, anybody in his way. And Israel was a great place to live, a great place to be. It was joy in the nation because David was a deliverer. Yes. God's man. A man after God's own heart. We find that David had glaring fault flaws. Church, you don't need to be perfect for God to use you. David had major mistakes, but he was a man after God's own heart. Yes. See, some of us, we, we're looking for the wrong thing in people and in yourself. But when you come to God, you don't come to God. With, you come to him bankrupt. He's the one that gives you the gold. Purchase some of gold. Try it in the fire yeah. that you might be rich. Yeah. That's revelation. When we come to God, we have to put aside all self-righteousness. My prayer life's not good enough. My obedience isn't good enough. Yes. David was the kind of person that could just sing God's praise on the backside of a hill. Mm -hmm. You ever run up on somebody just singing? Yes. Just in their own world? Say, this guy's crazy. But he could worship God. Tears running down his eyes and singing the psalms unto the Lord. And at the same time, he could run up on a guy and cut his neck. Glory. He was a mighty warrior. Mm. And a great singer. Yeah. And a great yeah. worshiper. All the vicissitudes in the life of a child of God. That's why I don't mess with some of these ladies that be singing. Because I know y'all got something else in you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. I don't listen to the loud talkers. The strongest person in the room is typically the quietest person. I tell my kids and my sons, don't talk too much. You're exposing how dumb you are. I'm telling you what the Bible says. The Bible says even a fool is considered wise if he's quiet. Uh, blessed quietness. You remember that, Bishop? We used to sing blessed quietness. Oh, let me move on before I get in trouble. Abraham, a great deliverer. David, a great deliverer. 
But Matthew ends his genealogy. genealogy. Somebody said genealogy. genealogy. That's a hard word. You got it right. Give yourself a hand praise. Come on, clap your hands for yourself. <laughs> you got one word right this morning. He says, now the birth of Jesus was on this wise. This morning, as we think about all the great deliverers, there has been a last and a final deliverer. The Bible lets us know that this man's name was Jesus and that he was a child that was born with all of the Holy Spirit. The Bible lets us know that he was anointed with the oil of gladness above all his fellows. Peter said there was no guile in his mouth, that he didn't have a bad thought, this particular deliverer. Uh, this deliverer that had all power was also a miracle worker. He was concerned about parties. And his first miracle, he turned water into wine. Hallelujah. Thank God. He turned water into wine because he wanted them to have a good time. Church, do you know God is concerned about your personal needs and desires and the things that you want? Uh, do you understand that God wants to touch you in the very small things that you desire? He knows every single thing that you want, and he wants to do more than deliver. He wants to bring all your desires and your hopes full circle. But the Bible lets us know that this deliverer, uh, Israel had a system of offerings and sacrifices. But Hebrews 10 says it's in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, that the Lord had no pleasure, but a body that he prepared. And today as we come to church and, and we think about all that God has done, when we think about how he delivered us, sister said that God delivered her for cancer. Yeah. Uh, we got our own testimony. Some of us, God delivered some of us from cigarettes. Yeah. So God delivered us from a crazy, some of us from a crazy man. God delivered some of us from a crazy woman. God delivers some of us from drugs. Can I get an amen this morning? But I'm here to tell you there's a deliverer available this morning, and his name is Jesus. He's alive and well this morning, and he's available all that would call on his name. I'm talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It ain't hard to preach it, is it? When we call on his name, he don't ask you where you've been, what you've been doing. But he comes right on by and, and gets in your situation, don't he? When I call on his name, don't he show up? He don't ask you and run you down. James said he'll give you wisdom and he won't upbraid you. You know how mom and daddy come in and say, I told you so. Not Jesus. He just wants to give you the wisdom to get out of your situation. He knows you got yourself in it, but he ain't worried about that. Because he's a good God. He's a great God. That's why David said, the Lord is my rock. He's what I climb upon when I need help. He is my fortress and my strong high tower. And he is my deliverer this morning. Uh, you might be able to get your own food this morning. But you can't get out of situations that you need God's help. He's a deliverer. That's the truth. He's a deliverer. Good word. He's a deliverer. He's a deliverer. He's a deliverer. Deliverer. He's a deliverer. Yeah. 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 When nobody else can do it, he's a deliverer. When your back is against the wall, he's a deliverer. Yeah. When no one else can help, when you can help yourself, yeah. God is a deliverer. Yeah. He's my fortress. He's my hope. He's my father. He's my king. He's our savior this morning. Somebody said he's a bridge, he's a bridge. over troubled waters. Thank you. Hallelujah. He's a bridge over troubled waters. When we can't get from A to B, when life's troubles and perils and burdens, and personal failures, and our sin becomes too much. And what I found out is this. God doesn't always move when we think he ought to move. Fourteen generations, not days, not months, not years, generations. You see, in our mind, we need to get out of stuff right now. God don't work like that. God does not always work like that. Because suffering produces perseverance. 
I'm back in Romans now. Perseverance produces character. Yes. And character produces hope. What a blessing that God knows what he's doing. Yes. Suffering produces perseverance, yes. or what we call patience. When you suffered a while, you know how to endure a little bit of heat. Some folks come in church, and if the temperature are right, they go right out the door. But all, uh, those that, of us who know how to endure, <laughs> give me a fan. Pastor got it too hot in here. <laughs> I know how to suffer a little something. Because if I suffer, it's going to produce patience. Yeah. My ability to endure. Yeah. Same thing James said is what we needed during times of trials. Right. And, and when you're being tempted, and when you're dealing with all kind of trouble, he said what you really need is patience. Just wait it out. Yeah. Wait it out. Right. You know. But, but after it's produced a patience in us, we find out that we have the character God wants us to have. Amen. That's why we tell people over and over, don't leave church. If you don't get past the suffering, if you don't get past the day-to-day -day rigor in this life, you'll never have the godly character. This is how we divide out true people of faith. Yes. 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 Don't trick yourself. Because this is how it happens. This is how you grow in faith. We just look at people and say, oh, what a great woman of God. No. She, she went through the same thing that Christ went through. He went through suffering. He went through being despised and spat on and mistreated. He was rejected by his family. They didn't believe who he was despite what he did. Some of us folks won't believe who we say we are because we ain't who we say we are. He was exactly who he said he was. He didn't have any sin. He didn't have any bad days. He didn't have any off days. He was always good because he was always God. Yes. But yet he had to go do those things. The Bible said he, he learned these things. About Christ learned obedience by the, by the things he suffered. That's how it happens. If you're ever going to be obedient to God, don't give up. That's what, how it works. It, it don't work by no... Oh, well, there he goes. What a, what a wonderful Christian. It don't work like that, friend. Yeah. No, no, no. You have to go through the ups and downs of life. Yeah. And, and I've learned that it's not always age. Mm -hmm. no. He's like, eek. Yeah. It's not always age. Because you yeah. old fools used to be young fools. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes disobedient old folk was young disobedient old folk who never turned it around. Never turned it around. So Jesus writes to the church in Sardis, strengthen the things that remain. Sardis had got off from God. They, they were a strong church, but they had got off. But he told them, strengthen what's left. Whatever's around you, some of us, we've had loss this year. You've lost people. You've lost family members. You've had friends to leave you. And as God works in you, you're going to lose more people. Oh, yeah. God clears the way out. By the time you really get saved for real, there won't be nobody that was in the old life around. And you up there wondering, asking, like David, why did you get rid of Saul? Why are you crying about something I got rid of? I'm talking about daughters, kids, sisters, brothers. God moves folks out the way that ain't no good for you. Remember what he said in John? He said, every branch that doesn't bear more fruit, I, I cut it off. God does it. A good husband, a good father. Are you trying to figure out what happened to Reggie? I'll tell you what happened to Reggie. Reggie wasn't no good for you. Come on home to me. Charlene, Charlene was no good for you. God got rid of Charlene. Charlene was tough. Amen, Brother Sam. Can you say amen behind that man? That's my main man right there. He, he been looking after me ever since I came to Monson. Sometimes I'll, I'll be sitting in my yard cutting up, thinking, oh, life is good. What, what can I do to get in trouble? And then 
Brother Scott would roll up. I said, oh, I got to behave now. Got to get back holy again. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. Thank you. Hallelujah. But God is a deliverer. He will. He's a deliverer. Yes. And he sent this word today because he told me that the people here need deliverance. And I don't want to joke so much that I, you missed the boat. The deliverance is not going to come through me. <laughs> it's going to come through God. Yeah. And it's going to be the right time. Yeah. It was 14 generations. Not because God liked to run people through 14. Because he wants you to know he is a deliverer. Yes, he is. The Bible said in Psalms that he comes right early. Mm -hmm. he, he's right on time. Right on A lot of times we say, oh, God, I need to deliver from this. And then he happens. The Bible says that one day is like a thousand years to God. And a thousand years is like a day. And he don't have no regard to time. Oh, we put a great tax on time, don't we? Oh, I got to get this done. And this has to be done. I got to get this from 30. And then 35 and 26. And I didn't make 22 schools, so I got to make 42 schools. God don't work like that. It, the greatest blessings often come to flower over time. If you talk and ask people in this church, they say, oh, man, I hear after all this time, look how God blessed me. Mm -hmm. My greatest blessing came at how I was when I got married? Mm -hmm. 42. 42. Mm -hmm. 42. And God gave me a wonderful, God-loving wife mm -hmm. who don't fuss and fight, even when my feet stink, <laughs> even when I got fired from my job. Uh -huh. Seven days after our honeymoon, I got fired. I told uh -huh. y'all that. That man, they fired me out here. But nothing. Lied on me. Brought me in the HR and lied on me. I balled up my fist. And the Lord said, unball your fist. I got something better for you. And he did. But, but 42 years, and if you ask the person, oh, I'm supposed to get married out of college. How? Why? Who said that? In God's terms. And when it comes to your personal life, you can get so down on yourself. Lord, I'm not living like I'm supposed to. And I'm not, I'm not making a case for sin, church. You know me. I know the word. I, I'm not trying to run you out. I'm talking about being honest. Because Peter said this. He said, the God of all grace that has called you to eternal glory, you're heaven bound, after you have suffered a while. The same God that brought you to heaven is bringing you to heaven has ordained a time of suffering. Yes. But what I've learned is you can learn in suffering. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, you can learn in suffering. A lot of people get a lot of stuff done while they're going through uh, I learned how to do Excel while I was putting up with a horrible job. So, well, I can't stand this place, but I'm going to learn Excel. <laughs> I'm just trying to make it plain for you this morning so you don't get so down because you're waiting on something. God is coming by. And just as he came right on time, bam, 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 for Israel, Abraham to David, he delivered the nation at the right time. The Bible says Christ was foreordained to die. He, he, he didn't want to die. God did not want him to die in the age of Instagram. Mm. I don't even want to go there. Mm. Had Jesus died in the day of social media, oh, this would have been so horrible. It had never worked because everything on there is fake anyhow. It would have been such a hard thing to get through, but he, know, he knew just when to come. And he knows just how to come now. So what does that do for us? It ought to give us a peace. A peace. Yes. A peace. Thank you. If he don't do it today, you have peace. Ooh. If it don't happen tomorrow, have peace. Good. Some things you can't undo right away. Maybe we should turn the camera off before I give my testimony. Mm. But when I was younger, I was running around and I was in doing nefarious things. Let me say that much. Don't get me out of trouble. But what I found out was what I was so deep into this thing that I couldn't get out like that. I, I had made friendships. I had made ties. I had money in places I couldn't go and just undo. I had investments that I couldn't turn around. And the Lord let me know that it, this is all going to show you. This is all part of your repentance is that I show you what a web that sin causes See, 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 Israel went into bondage. They said from, 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 
from, from David, to, uh, David to Babylon, when they went into bondage, it's because of disobedience. Mm-hmm. And we see a type in our Christian walk in, in the release of Israel from Egypt. When God delivered them, so when we're delivered by the blood of that passion lamb, Jesus Christ, there, when you go back, you don't get to go back and hang in the middle because Pharaoh's pursuing. The Bible says the devil goes about like a roaring lion seeking who he can't destroy. So, so if you stop going progressing in your walk with God, he's still coming. So the Christian walk is always forward. It's forward when you're struggling. Forward when you're down, forward when you're happy, forward when you think you're God's gift to the earth, and forward when you don't think you're nobody. Because when we look inside the genealogy, who did you see? Rahab. Ah, yeah, now, now I get it. God could use anybody. He, he purposely put her in there who was just a prostitute. And you know what the 70s prostitutes look like, don't you? Red hair, cigarette in their mouth. I can, I, Rahab was a mess, but she trusted God. She was a mess when God met her, but she trusted God. Later, she was included in the lineage of Jesus. She is in the line of Jesus Christ. She's in the very lineage of who Jesus is. You see, sin, sinful lips can touch the streams of divine love, but they can't pollute it. That's why when they come to Christ, he never got leprosy. Because his goodness comes on to us Amen. when we touch him. A lot of times we don't want to get close to him because of how bad we are. But let me tell you what. There were some lepers that ran to Jesus. And in your mind with all your sin, and leprosy, leprosy is just a sign of sin. It's just a symbolic for sin. And, and, and leprosy goes everywhere. So sin has affected every area of our life. Your thinking, your giving, how you love people. And don't think anything else. But some of them ran to Christ. Yeah. They ran to him. And that's what a good Christian does. Broke down, busted, disgusted, unhappy with myself, whether I'm in bondage, where I'm struggling. He said, the Bible says that God is married to the backslider. So I thought he was married to me. I'm doing good. No, no, no. He's married to backsliders. Amen. You know, when Israel was a child, I loved him. That's what he says. So even when you were, regardless of where you're at, long before you even started thinking about God, he had already said his love and affection is what yes. we call, it's what we call a predestination, an election. Yes. God chose you long before you got here. Do you know that? That's why you're here. You didn't stumble up here on your own. He chose a point in time to say, I'm drawing him now. Paul, Paul, Peter breaks it down in, in his prologue. He said, we are those who, who, who were called the elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father. He said we were drew by the Holy Spirit. And then he said we was washed in the blood of the Lamb. You, anybody ask you how you got saved or what you're doing, tell them. Say, God foreordained me long before I got here. And just like Moses, he, it was 40 years before he did, started to work in the life of the greatest person in the Old Testament. 40 years, 80 years before he got to deliver him. 80 years old, and you're going to go deliver somebody? Yes. Because if God is on your side, who could be against you? And, and today we battle the smallest things. And let's just talk about COVID for a minute. Now that we understand that if you had 10 shots, you still going to get COVID. <laughs> Can, can, we, can we accept that now? That if you wear a mask and, and you glue something over the top of your head, you still going to get sick? Well, same thing I was saying two years ago. Ain't no mask going to stop you from getting sick. Yeah. Being sick and suffering and going through stuff is a part of life. Yes. And they're trying to go to Mars now. <laughs> I, they're going to Mars. Mars ain't going to stop you from dying. You're going to die on Mars. It gets you an orange casket looking like a marsh. <laughs> Amen. Because suffering has its place. Yes. Suffering must make you stronger. Yes. Suffering must make you wiser. Thank you, so don't despise it. And when you're going through, don't stop coming to church. Get in here. The old church was a bunch of hypocrites. That's right. 
What are you talking about? Don't bring yourself up. No, you bring yourself up in here. I know that's right. You get up in here with everybody else. Amen. Because they may not be telling you they're going to do something worse. They struggle with the same thing you struggle with. Right. I'm telling you, Pastor John telling you this morning. I'm teaching this morning. Right. Don't stop coming from God's house. God loves corporate worship. Yeah. You get by yourself. That's okay. But God don't like when you go by yourself. Bible says in the book of uh, Proverbs that those who are alone are selfish and they seek their own. So, so if you're so spiritual and you're by yourself, I had to text one brother. He said, I'm, I'm going to watch it live today. I said, we don't do live no more. This is where we live. We live over here. Come in here. We're going to see something live. Live folks are walking around here. Come to church. Come to church. What, what a wonderful thing to be able to have a, a, a cyber pastor who, who, who can't get no discernment on you or pray for you or touch you. Yet Jesus took on the form of a man so he might walk around and physically be with folks. And now we don't want to do nothing face to face. Oh, this is Zoom me, FaceTime me. Right, can I come by? <laughs> Sister said, no, not here. <laughs> Let's give God some praise. I'm done with this The Lord is not rocking my face this morning. Maybe it's a dial on a shield for me. My glory. And lift up my head. Lift, lift your head up this morning. And that gets you down. Okay, it's time to give if you want to prepare. Give God some due here. Give him what he is due and worthy. Worthy of all the praise. Worthy of all Yes. We're trying to figure it out. Anybody need prayer? Anybody needs has a need that we can meet as a church? We want to try to meet that. Pastor Boy, Minister Boy, will you come up? Elder Darnetta, will you come up?
five minutes right after church. I just want to talk to you right here. Let's stand and we're going to dismiss. And I'm meeting with the Women's Conference Committee as well. When is it? Women's Conference Committee. For just a when? And the women are going to meet as well. Okay, everyone with uplifted up hands. Let the words of my mouth be the meditation in my heart. Meditation. And be accepted on thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength, my, strength. my redeemer. Okay, men, let me get you right down here for three minutes.